Hey everyone, welcome back to Harl's Garage. Now, it's been a minute since y'all have seen my 1997 Ford Ranger. Uh, about a month or two ago, I had a issue with my master cylinder. I'll show y'all. It had, basically it was leaking out the back edge here. And you can see where it was, where it was leaking there. Um, so yeah, my master cylinder was leaking, so just out of abundance of precaution, I ended up parking the truck, haven't really driven it since, um, and I needed to do a full brake job anyway. So what I decided to do was swap the rear axle out for a Ford Explorer axle. Now this already has the Ford 8.8 rear axle, but it has 28 splines. Um, the Ford Explorer axle has 31 splines, which is significantly stronger for any kind of future power upgrades or, you know, off-roading. And so, and additionally, it gives you full disc brakes all around. So if you look here, I've got all the parts needed. I've got my front and rear brakes, gear oil to switch out when I go ahead and switch out the um, rear end cables, rear brake cables to have to fab up because that's one of the things you'll have to do. I've got um, a new master cylinder. We'll just go ahead and replace that one. And even though that one hasn't leaked anymore and my brakes really didn't feel any kind of squishy, again, just out of a abundance of precaution, we'll go ahead and just replace this. And then of course I've got my brake fluid as well. When you go ahead and replace the axle on this Ranger and swap it with the Ford Explorer, one of the things you have to do is do a little bit of welding. And so Andrew went ahead and took the Ford Explorer axle that I bought off Facebook Marketplace. He welded the spring purchase on them because the currently the Ford Explorer spring purchase are underneath. So essentially I just bought some new ones from an off-road shop, had, had him weld those on there. So when he comes over here, he'll be able to put that axle back in here and then weld some new shock mounts on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the truck lifted up here and I'm just gonna kinda take you along the process of swapping out this rear axle and doing a full brake job including rear disc brake conversion on my 97 Ranger here. All right guys, switching over to voiceover mode here to explain the install. While the truck is still on the ground, start by loosening up the drive shaft bolts. You will most likely have to use a breaker bar first to break the torque. To support the axle, I place two jacks underneath it. This will allow to lower and roll out the axle later. On the top of the pumpkin, there's a speed sensor. Be sure to disconnect this before removing the axle. Next, you will need to remove the main brake line. I use a 7 16 flare nut wrench to remove this line. And then remove the bracket that holds the line on the bump stop. I then disconnected the sway bar. We won't need it anyway with the new axle in place. Andrew arrived and helped me remove my parking brake line. Not only will this need to be removed with the axle, but we will also have to replace it later with the Ford Explorer equivalent. One of the last steps is to remove the U-bolts and plates. Once removed, you can then drop the axle.
We placed the Explorer axle on jack stand and got it positioned in place. Once that was done, Andrew loosely installed the new U-bolts and plates. These replacements are much thicker and stronger, so we don't have to worry about axle warp. After we are completely done, we will torque down the U-bolts. Andrew then measured and then welded the new shock mounts in place. When doing this swap, you'll have to either weld new ones or cut off the existing and re-weld. After welding the shock tabs, we drained the master cylinder so we could replace it and complete the brake job. To remove it, just unhook the brake line connections and any electro connections and it'll simply unbolt from the back. Andrew made sure to first bleed the new master cylinder before the install. And while he was installing the new master cylinder, I went ahead and replaced the rusted rear brakes with a new brake kit from PowerShop. Having disc brakes in the rear was one of the favorite parts of this upgrade. Now the front brakes are a little bit more tricky. On the 97 four-wheel drive models, the bearings are set into the rotors. So essentially, you will have to disassemble the hub to replace the brakes. First, you must remove the C-clip, followed by a spline washer and some flat washers. Next, remove the cam assembly to expose the spindle nut. Before removing the nut, there's a small metal lock key that will need to be removed. After that, you can remove the spindle nut with a two and three eighths socket. Now you can change your rotors out, and with that, your bearings will come out too. Here's a close-up of all the parts. Before putting the new rotors on, Andrew inspected and repacked the bearings with fresh grease. This part of the maintenance was well overdue. Andrew then replaced the bearings and in a small amount of fresh grease around the hub. Next, to reinstall the automatic locking hubs, you first tighten the wheel bearing adjustment nut to 35 foot-pounds. This will seat the bearings and you do this while spinning the rotor. You then spin the rotor and back it off the wheel bearing adjustment nut one fourth of a turn or 90 degrees. You finish by retightening the wheel bearing adjustment nut to 16 inch pounds. You can then replace the locking key, washers, and then the C-clip. After placing the auto hub on, you can reinstall the caliper and brake pads.
With the front and rear brakes done, Andrew and I added new brake lines to the rear and reconnected all the fittings to get ready for bleeding. We also ran the new e-brake cable as well. But before bleeding the brakes, we changed out the gear oil. After draining the existing oil, Andrew made a new seal on the diff cover with RTV. He then reinstalled the cover, first tightening it hand tight, then torquing it down. I then put just under three quarts of 75W 140 gear oil to complete the process. We then bled the brakes all around, removing all the old, nasty, and contaminated brake fluid and replaced it with fresh fluid. With the brake bleeding process done, it was time to finish off by bedding the brakes. When you install new brakes, you're going to want to bed them as soon as possible, not only to ensure proper performance, but maximum brake life as well. I followed PowerSoft's method by going from 30 miles an hour to five miles an hour with moderate to heavy braking allowing 30 seconds in between for cooling. I repeated this procedure around my neighborhood 30 times. All right guys, we got the brake bedding procedure done. The axle's in, so everything's done. The truck is ready to go again. Pretty excited because I haven't driven it in a couple months. So it's glad to have my truck back. Here you can see the axle in. Now a few notes. Obviously I did this because I've got some planned future upgrades for the truck. Um, one of the questions you know you may have if you watch the video is, well, why didn't you redo the hubs with manual hubs when you were uh, rebuilding the front? 
And that's because I'll probably keep the Dana 35 twin traction beams that are already in the, in the truck, but I'll add Dana 44 outers to them. There's a conversion that you can do with a little, basically some boring out uh, and some fab work. And you can actually have stronger Dana 44 knuckles, which um, does require you to change your bolt pattern all around. Uh, or at least in the rear because you'll be five by five and a half in the front but that's going to give you a super strong front axle with a lot of travel and obviously a super strong rear axle now as well now again not only did i get the disc brakes all around the stronger axle means that eventually i will be able to easily put 35s or 37s on this and build it up as more of an overland rig than even my 2020 Ford Ranger is right here but anyway guys hope this video helped you out or if you found it enjoyable and if you're considering do, doing this to your Ranger I highly recommend it so with that being said guys I've got a lot more content coming with this truck as well as my other Ranger and some other car projects here soon so if you haven't yet be sure to subscribe leave a comment down below tell me what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video